Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms. And today I'm holding little Pee Pee because I was thinking about him as I was getting uh, my idea ready for this video today, in which I'm gonna talk about, you know, we never know what is right around the corner for us. And um, I'm gonna read the last post that I wrote on my very first blog, and it actually is from August 24th of 2008, the day before I met Alex. And uh, similarly, the day before this little guy indirectly came into my life and became my best friend. So, you know, I think it's a valuable lesson. I get messages from people all the time and they'll say, I'm going through, you know, this horrible breakup. I, I can't go on. I'm not gonna be able to go on one more day. Or people will say to me, you know, like, I don't know what my life holds for me. I don't know if I should move. I don't know if I should stay. Somebody will say to me, my mom's gonna die any day or my dad just passed away. And, you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to move on. And uh, like I've said recently that I learned from Oprah and Maya Angelou that, you know, like in those moments that you're going through something horrible, look up and say thank you because you are literally on the precipice of learning a very valuable lesson or having the door to your next journey open for you. And I truly, truly believe that, right? And it's interesting because um, I, I have always known that I started my very first blog out of being very lonely, right? And I would go around and drive around at night and get coffee and listen to music and audiobooks. And then I would come home and I would write these blogs. But I didn't really know truly that it ended the day before I met Alex, which meant that the next post that I would have written would have been the day that we met, but I never wrote that post. And in fact, I never wrote on that blog again. I just started another blog down the road and that next one was called Thoughts from the Couch. And what happened was that I just was, it had kind of cathartically worked its magic and I was done. I didn't need to write anything else. And when I go back and I read that first, you know, blog, like all of the posts together, what's very interesting to me is that it's very obvious that I was grieving my past relationship and that I was looking for something else in my life. I was looking for my next love. I was looking for my next, you know, the forever person, as people say, and things like that, you know? Um, and um, I guess I found him, because we're still here, you know? And uh, I, there was no need to continue that blog at that time. I remember months later, I don't even know what happened. I guess I probably just stopped writing on it, you know? I remember months later having a conversation with my cousin Caroline, and we were talking about blogs, and I missed writing or whatever. And she said, well, why don't you write it from stuff that you've learned, you know, doing what you do as a living, at that time being a counselor or whatever, I had just, you know, left where I was working. And I said, you know, that's actually a really, you know, that's a good thing, a good point that I could do that. So um, that's what my next uh, blog was about, Thoughts from the Couch. It was actually lessons that I learned about myself and in life from people that I had met, you know, in practice through the years and whatever. And, um, you know, then that went to the next thing, went to the next thing. When you look at your life overall, and, and it doesn't have to just be, you know, this string from one blog to the next, it can be very much, you know, like one sport to the next, or one friend group to the next, or one career to the next, or one job to the next. But I think that when you look at it overall and you stand back, you can see a pattern or a theme to the choices that you make in your life. And for me, storytelling has always been the theme that has existed. And when I look at that now, whether it be in video form, and I do not write on a blog anymore, but I still do write of my books, whether it's you know in video form or writing my books or a blog from the past or reading a story from the library when I was five years old, that has always been the language that I have spoken, has been stories. So anyway, I wanted to kind of um, read to you a little bit of this last uh, blog, and it's interesting what it's titled. So this is from August 24th of 2008, and it's called The Oprah Show. And I'm going to edit out the list part, but I do want to read this to you. She really cornered something on the market when she started her My Favorite Things show. But wasn't it Julie Andrews who sang it first in The Sound of Music? I thought so. I've always been really interested in reading other people's best of lists, whether the list contained books, movies, or places to travel. So I was sitting around tonight, bored, drinking coffee, trying to decide if I should clean the fish tank or take the dog out for a walk when I decided I would make a few best of lists of my own. Now it's important to note that my lists do not contain the unoriginal books that must be read to impact someone's life, such as The Fountainhead or The Bible. And most of my favorite movies or movies I feel that everyone else should see are not Oscar winners. But I don't think it matters, since my list so constantly changes, it will be interesting to look back someday 
here we go, be, look back someday and see where I was at this point in my life and what had seemed important and what is no longer important to me. It's funny how those things change as we age and become different people and the things that once were important to us are no longer important at all. Anyone that knows me knows that I am an avid reader and movie watcher, so there is no way to put all of my favorites on any kind of list. But I'll just do a countdown from 10 to 1, much like David Letterman. All right, here we go. I'll actually do these two lists. Movies everyone should see before they become too jaded. Number 12, Bully. Number 11, Kids. Number 10, Crimes of the Heart. Number 9, Charlotte's Web. Number 8, Night Mother. Number 7, Into the Night. Number 6, The Miss Firecracker Contest. Number 5, The Way We Were. Number 4, Lost in Translation. Number 3, <laughs> Basic Instinct. Number 2, My Dog Skip. And number 1, To Kill a Mockingbird. Okay, let's see. Books that everyone should read at least once. Number 10, The Catcher in the Rye. Number 9, Witch's Sister by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. One of my favorite book as a kid. Number 8, Help, I'm a Prisoner in the Library. Two kids' books. Number 7, Member of the Wedding, which I'm actually reading this month on Audible. Number 6, Corduroy. A lot of these kids' books really got on the list. That's interesting. Number 5, The Sun Also Rises. Number 4, She's Come Undone. Number three, Invisible Monsters. Number two, Endless Night. And number one, Ferris Beach. To Kill Mockingbird didn't even make the list. I could go on and on. I'm not so much into material things these days, although I love diving watches and diesel jeans, but only old ones that cuff up and have old paint on them. I like poppy seed muffins and cupcakes, especially with lots of colorful frosting and maybe a flower or one candle. I'm really into sad, sappy country music. My favorite... A coffee place is Daz Boggs at 9th in Denver, although Gas America and Speedway serve a mean cup of joe at 3 a.m. Old flannel shirts and beaded jewelry as gifts and CDs that people make for me to play in my car while I drive. I love the smell of men who have just taken a soapy shower, the bookshelves of libraries, and walking into a hotel room for the first time. My friend Paul's balcony has the best view in America, and sitting right now watching my dog sleep is the best view in the world. The best time of, uh, time of the day is 2.34 a.m. right now. And in one minute, the best time will be 2.35 a.m. So I guess, as much as I wouldn't mind being in the audience on the Oprah Winfrey show, my favorite things, I'm not really sure why I'd care. And really, I don't. I have everything I need. And it only costs a few dollars to rent a great movie or buy a great book. The two best things in the world. So I don't need the newest phone on the market or whatever she's giving out. She doesn't really get it at all. If she had a real My Favorite Things show, she might take a look at the little things that matter to her. The top of my list would be a phone call from a friend I haven't heard in a while, or maybe a postcard. No one sends postcards anymore. Maybe I'll start that tomorrow. I love you guys, and I'll see you later.